Welcome to another episode of Treasure Reef and today I'm going to talk about quarantine both fish and coral so stay tuned and it's going to be a fun episode. In my many years of coral keeping I've had numerous aquariums and I've been on and off when it comes to quarantine systems. Most of the time I was lucky once in a while I would have fish that would die on me or corals that uh, would bring unwanted pests into different tanks. Um, my current tank has a, a, an aeptasia problem and um, I decided so this time around I'm gonna do things properly. So starting from scratch I'm building a brand new uh, system and for that system I want to make sure that there is no aeptasia, there is no any other critters that may come on corals and um, today I'm gonna go through a full overview of my pretty elaborate dedicated uh, system for quarantine multi-tier and um, let's uh, get started. This year I decided to build an ultimate quarantine system for both fish and coral. The stand on the left is custom built, it's painted white color and it can handle up to three aquariums. The middle tank is my fish quarantine, the one above it is coral quarantine stage one and the one on your right is coral quarantine stage two. So this is able to handle enough fish load and coral for all of my upcoming systems. We'll start with the fish quarantine system which occupies the middle level of my stand. It's a standard 40 gallon long breeder aquarium. Um, I think it's Aquion and it runs uh, an AquaClear 70 filter, uh, some live rock and uh, some um, empty pipes for fish to hide. I'm also using a Tunzi uh, powerhead for the flow. No frills but the fish seem to like it and so far I haven't lost a single fish in this setup. Now all of my corals are coming into this first aquarium. It's an innovative marine 17 gallon long tank. I don't think you can get it anymore but uh, I have this one sitting around for quite some time and I think this is a perfect uh, opportunity to use this tank. So it's very simple. Right now I don't have any fish in here. I'm using a Nero 5 powerhead to run it and it's got the Hydra 26 HD on top of it. So right now the corals are showing a little bit of um, stress but this is just because they've gone through a dip and we'll show you exactly how the dip went in uh, the next section of this video. You can also see the flow is very nice, uh, strong. I'm using a simple Kamoer uh, four channel pump to those uh, the three part and I'm running Hydra's control for uh, on this tank. So very simple, very straightforward. I don't think there's a lot of parts that can uh, break but I'm also able to keep uh, track of the pH, of the temperature and I really like this flipper um, uh, magnifying glass uh, with uh, the binocular system in it which helps me observe all of my uh, corals in stage one. So whenever I see any issue, I'm uh, pretty fast to react. The uh, stage two coral uh, system is my innovative marine 25 gallon lagoon. And the corals are gonna make it here only after they've been uh, under observation and dips uh, the full regimen after a whole month of being in the other system. So here it's a multi-level system, very simple. Uh, now the equipment is the Ecotec MP40 quiet drive pump. I'm also using the new XR15 Blue uh, Generation 5 uh, Radeon, which I absolutely love. I really like, like the par and the spread on this aquarium. I have a single surgeon fish in this aquarium just to help with any algae. And I also have some macroalgae in here to be used as a bit of a, a nutrient control device. 
right now I don't have any skimmer on it but I'll be setting one up uh, hopefully next week and you can see the dosing is done by Versa Yucatec and you can also see my uh, trusty Apex uh, controller where I can actually control this particular aquarium. Every week I'm gonna take corals from my Coral One system, still on the plugs, introduce them into this temporary container with some water from the main tank. I'll use a different cleaner on rotation. This time it's gonna be Revive Coral Cleaner. And then set a timer for 10 minutes, um, do some vigorous stirring in uh, this container and use this light to see what will come off the plugs and the frags themselves. Depending on what will come of it, I'll make a note of whether to extend my quarantine. I will also, um, every couple of weeks, I will break the frags off of the plugs and re-glue them on brand new plugs. So this way only coral tissue remains. Now we're going to go through my regular weekly process. Um, I take all of the corals from my Coral One system and then I do a regular dip and I usually rotate what I'm dipping um, with and set a timer for 10 minutes and then I usually have one or two containers where I'm going to move the water around and then just move all of the corals and see if anything is going to come off. So you'll see at the end of this video that nothing has come off except for a couple of copy pods. And this is probably the fourth um, dip that I've been doing. So at this point, I think they're ready to be uh, moved into my Coral uh, 2 st stage system. So here I've uh, set this up. I think I actually heard my other aquarium overflowing, so I had to uh, look into this but other than that everything is going well I also am using this magnifying glass which I really like it gives me an opportunity to observe all of the corals up close and not make sure not that I don't miss anything the two bins on the right is where I'm gonna do all the rinsing so again I'm using the water from my coral one system and this also allows me to do uh, a water change so this way I don't need to do any uh, targeted water changes on my Coral One system. So 10 minute dip is now over and I'm now going to examine uh, the corals just to see if, how they look, if there is anything left in the bin that I should be concerned uh, about. And then basically it's gonna go into my Coral Stage 2 system. So let's all take a look. This is the first bin and I don't see anything there. Uh, these white specks are, there's actually a little copy pot in there. Um, yeah, it, I really always feel bad about uh, killing the copy pots. So they seem to be all right. I'm going to examine each and every one of them under the magnifying glass just in case. And these are brand new plugs. I've only plugged them about a week ago, so I think uh, this is safe to go into my stage two system. Now, this is me taking corals from my treasure reef system. And as you know, I have some Aptasia in there, so I'm actually gonna uh, break off all of the plugs from that system and it's going to take me quite some time i'm going to use new plugs but before i'm going to do this i'm going to do a safety dip just to make sure um, i can observe whatever is going to come off of it and so i'm going to use the same coral revive by two little fishies um, the same dose as i used for my other dip just examining everything and i have a couple of smooth skin acropora in there and this means that I'm probably going to shorten the dip just for those ones. So I'm going to take them out a little bit sooner. And then I'm going to plug them on brand new plugs. There's uh, 20 corals in there. And um, actually I'm going to break one of them in the process. So there's going to be 21 plugs. 
I hope you had fun uh, watching this video and you found it educational. Uh, if you have any suggestions on how I can up my game even further, please uh, write me in the comments below and I would love to hear your thoughts. I also want to say a big thank you for all of your comments in my previous, previous video where I was talking about my corals and uh, them losing color. I've read all of your messages and I've taken a lot of it. Uh, too hard and I applied it to this tank and I must say that things are actually improving very very rapidly I'm pretty sure that it was a, a phosphate reduction problem for me as well as the salinity swing so um, I guess the lesson learned don't make too many changes all at once and when it comes to SPS and Acropora corals specifically you don't want to uh, make uh, sudden changes. Otherwise, uh, you may run into a similar problem that I had. So once again, huge thanks for your comments, for your support. And uh, now tell me what I can do better when it comes to quarantine.